Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie has asked Police Commissioner to investigate and take action against the operators of Reggae Mill Restaurant and Bar at Devon House in St. Andrew for continued breaches of the Disaster Risk Management Order. Mr. McKenzie made the disclosure yesterday as he addressed a virtual town hall to look at the Local Government Minister's COVID-19 response. This video surfaced a few weeks ago which showed a party in full swing at Reggae Mill at Devon House in St. Andrew. It was a violation of the protocols to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Because of the breach, Reggae Mill was ordered closed for two weeks. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says at the end of the two-week period, only the restaurant was allowed to reopen. But Mr. McKenzie says Reggae Mill continued to disobey the protocols by staging activities without the required places of amusement license. Since Monday... Reggae mills have been operating happy hour on a daily basis. They are advertising using various media platforms to advertise these events. And what is disturbing, using the images of individuals to promote this activity. Mr. McKenzie says it is clear that the management and operators of Reggae Mill have no regard for the protocols put in place to limit the spread of the coronavirus. The local government minister says he's since written to the police commissioner advising him about the actions of Reggae Mill. I've asked the commissioner to investigate and to take the necessary actions against the operator of Reggae Mills who continue to violate the protocols that have been set out. We will not allow anyone to violate the protocols that we have agreed upon with the entertainment sector. He says the operators of Reggae Mill have been disrespectful to the protocols and he's now prepared to take the strongest possible action. I'd like to advise the public that anybody who goes to that location and is caught participating in any activities that is not permitted under the order could find themselves in problems with the law. And I want to make that clear. We cannot have two standards. We are enforcing right across the country. The operators of reggae mill is no different. From any other Jamaica. He's urging the operators to cease and desist immediately or face consequences under the disaster risk management order. In the meantime, member of the Entertainment Advisory Board, Kamal Banke, reacted to the development. It is a situation that is very, very unfortunate that somebody within our fraternity is not adhering to the rules. And I am happy that, you know, there are no secrets between us. You know, what is good for one must be good for all and we have to uphold these standards and self-regulate in the meantime just over 40 percent of beaches and rivers have been complying with the protocols to reduce the coronavirus spread this was revealed by executive director of the social development commission sdc Dwayne vernon at that same town hall meeting beaches and rivers we're looking at 42 percent compliance and from the last report and this 42 percent compliance is actually a 20% improvement. So you can imagine what it, <laughs> what it was like. So, so, so certainly we have challenges at the beaches and rivers with regard to social distancing, wearing of masks when you're not in the water. So just a reminder of some of the areas, beaches and rivers may be open between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. No group of more than 20 people shall be allowed to congregate at any section of the beach or river and all such gathering areas must be at least six feet apart. And it's still not clear when nightclubs will reopen. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie says it's difficult to reopen nightclubs at this time. He says nightclubs are hard to manage. A number of persons who are operators of nightclubs who have outdoor areas that could be used to facilitate activities have written to us seeking permission to stage those events outside instead of on 
in indoor location where the circulation is going to be limited. And not all nightclubs can open their doors and their windows as, a bar, as bars would. And we now take a break on the midday news, but please stay with us. More local stories when we return. Welcome back. Continuing the news now. Fresh concerns this afternoon that Jamaicans could again be left behind by the world in the next industrial revolution. The worry stems from the reality that enough Jamaicans are not technologically prepared. More in the support from Dwayne Anderson. The Tablets in Schools initiative that has spanned separate administrations was once seen as the program that would help take thousands of Jamaican students into the technological age. But years later, the program has received a failing grade. The PNP spokesman on education, Peter Bunting, addressed the matter at an education forum on Wednesday evening. We quite frankly have wasted years trying to centrally implement a Tablets in Schools program. We should have been focusing instead on a complete learning management system. And if there's one silver lining, so to speak, of this COVID pandemic is that it should accelerate the adoption of technology in the teaching and learning process. And on the matter of using technology to help educate Jamaicans, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says that is one of his greatest ambitions. For him, it is critical that Jamaicans prepare for the fourth industrial revolution. 3D manufacturing, autonomous vehicles, presents, and the Internet of Things. To the average Jamaican, those things sound strange. But this is what will define the world. Well, it's it is defining the world you now, and it will become mainstream in a few years. Capital required. If we wait around, once again, we will become consumers of these things. And the worry, let me explain it, is that bauxite and tourism will not be able to pay for those goods. In the meantime, Mr. Bunting wants the Ministry of Education to give school leaders space to do just that, lead. He feels the ministry is an hindrance in some instances. The Ministry of Education has become an over-centralized bureaucracy that is inefficient and disempowering for school leadership. I'm not pointing fingers on my friend car, at my friend car, because this has some, is something that has been there for across administrations. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. Over 100 small and medium-sized enterprises are set to earn millions as the tourism ministry is celebrating Christmas in July. The event is not new to the ministry, but this year, amidst the global pandemic, it's being dubbed a well-needed lifeline for players in the tourism sector. Here's Kalisha Williams with that report. They say Christmas comes once a year, but over the years, players in the tourism sector have had the chance to also mark Christmas in July on their calendars. It's a time when small and medium-sized enterprises in the tourism sector get the opportunity to showcase their products. But now, during a pandemic, the event has taken on a new meaning, survival. People are starting to almost lose hope. And what better time to give people hope than Christmas? The event organized by the Tourism Ministry is expected to help cushion the economic fallout from COVID-19. Christmas in July is one of the signature events of the Tourism Linkage Network and is backed by the Tourism Enhancement Fund. There was obviously some concern about the staging of this Christmas in July, which has developed into a successful calendar event given the challenges posed by COVID-19. The Pegasus Ballroom in St. Andrew was the bonanza. Over 140 small and medium-sized enterprises showcased their product during different sessions throughout the day. Participants over the years have been chalking up millions of dollars in sales through contract negotiating at this event. The 50 highest earners of Christmas in July made a combined total and this is a nice figure of $9.2 million. The pandemic has been especially hard on some of these business owners, especially those who thrive off outdoor activities. 
Even as their goods are finally on display, Chairman of the Tourism Linkages Network, Adam Stewart, who was speaking at the event, said the journey is far from over. Some would say to you, never waste a good crisis. And right now, as we're deep in the crisis, we have a choice to program our minds mentally to see the negative or to look for the positive. And there are positives all around. Right time to retool, right time to renegotiate cost bases, right time to look at doing all the things, as I say, the great accelerator that many of us in business knew we probably should have done many years ago. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development has already listed Jamaica among the countries to face the worst economic fallout from COVID-19, with an 11% decline in the island's GDP expected this year. It's why Mr. Stewart believes Christmas in July is so important. There are hundreds of thousands of people, quite literally, waiting for us to make bold decisions so that they can have the economic ability to take care of their family. This has been complicated, but it is not something where you are down and out. Alicia Williams, TVJ News. Now, in the meantime, the tourism minister is encouraging Jamaicans to take advantage of the various deals being offered to them by hotels across the island. The minister made the announcement at the official launch of the Rediscover Jamaica campaign held at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in New Kingston yesterday. So the timing is right, therefore, for the Rediscover Jamaica campaign. Summer is traditionally a time when we take day trips to longtime favorites or to those undiscovered places. Our upcoming August holidays provide the perfect reason to enjoy our accommodations, attractions, shopping, and transportation. Now, Mr. Bartlett said when, making, when taking advantage of the deals, persons must adhere to the safety protocols established by the government. Some of you have seen some of these deals out there already in the marketplace. We wanted to take full advantage of them. And all with the protocols being observed. I want to emphasize that team and partners. The way that we manage in uncertainty the way that we manage the unknown is to follow the protocols that are known. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, is intensifying its environmental management program, which includes a public education campaign. The move is geared towards encouraging Jamaicans to properly secure and minimize their waste through composting. Speaking at a handing over ceremony for newly acquired garbage trucks yesterday, the NSWMA chairman, Dennis Chung, listed other components of the program he believes will also improve garbage collection across the island. Proper containerization, which is important because when you don't have a garbage containerized properly, it means that the truck, instead of spending 10 minutes on a road, spends one hour, and that slows down the process. Stamping out illegal dumping and reduction of waste in gullies, which is an exciting program, oddly spearheading now, will all combine to improve our efforts at collection. We need to get to that level of culture. Because when we talk about culture, it's dance and music. But culture is also how we treat with our environment and cleanliness. When we talk about education, it is A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. But it is also bits of paper lying on the ground. Pick them up, pick them up. The NSWMA received 20 new trucks, which brings the total number of trucks between 2016 to 2020 to 63. The agency now has 150 trucks. Mr. Ch Mr. Chung said the trucks will be distributed across the island. Right, and they'll be allocated proportionately between the regions to ensure standard collection throughout the country. So MPM will get seven, double PM five. SPM 4 and NEPM 4. The local authorities are pushing ahead with plans to reduce the number of people living on the streets. Yesterday, Sean Williams, a homeless man from 
Puss Gully in Port Maria, St. Mary, received the house from the Municipal Corporation. The house was constructed with funding from the Minister of Local Government and spearheaded by the Homeless Committee in the municipality. Funds were provided by the Ministry to the Corporation in order to assist not only homeless persons but other persons who are registered poor. But this house is the first house being constructed. The Homeless Committee was so creative as to also have a cake sale and proceeds from that cake sale is also going towards the dwelling for the gentleman. In the meantime, the Poor Relief Department is making an appeal to persons who are interested in offering their assistance to the initiative. We also visited a client, um, Lawrence Neal, and he also in need of uh, housing repairs. So if anybody out there would like to assist with the repair of Neal, uh, Neal Lawrence, you can contact this number, 573-8509 or 577-8448. Tropical storm Gonzalo is speeding towards the southern Windward Islands. It's expected to bring tropical storm conditions to portions of Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Tobago as well as Grenada tomorrow. At 11 o'clock, the storm was about 780 kilometers east of the southern Windward Islands. Forecasters say the center of Gonzalo will approach the islands tonight and then move across the islands tomorrow and then over the eastern Caribbean Sea on Sunday. Weakening is expected after Gonzalo moves into the Caribbean Sea and the cyclone is expected to dissipate by the middle of next week. And it's time now for sports. The West Indies and England were locked in a keen battle on the opening day of the third and a decisive test with the host team reaching a 246 for four at sports time in their first innings in the post tea session at Old Trafford in Manchester. Oli Pope, 84, and Joss Butler, 51, are the batsmen at the crease for England, who were sent to bat. The two have so far shared in a 124-run, fifth-wicket partnership. Kemar Roach has taken two for 45 so far, and Roston Chase, one for 24. The series is locked at one all. Meanwhile, the West Indies have made one change to their team from the first two matches, with inclusion of all-rounder Rakeem Cornwall for Pesa Alzari Joseph. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Don't forget to join us at 7 for a primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon and have a wonderful weekend.